Hello, welcome to the channel. It's your favourite Scotsman here again. And today we are going to talk about how you can reduce your risk in 2023. Now, I'm not about to sit here and tell you to cut down on your alcohol consumption. That would be a little bit rich coming from a Scotsman. I'm also not going to advise you against jumping out of a plane if you so desire. Take it from me though, jumping out of a plane is overrated. However, it's probably a safe bet not to do them both at the same time. Yeah, safety first. We are going to talk about though identity theft. What it actually means and discuss some ways you can reduce your risk of being a victim. Statistically, the chances of you having your identity stolen are fairly low. About 4,500 Canadians are impacted each year. However, these crimes are on the rise. According to a report from WealthCo's IT lead, reports for identity theft linked to social media accounts jumped by a staggering 1,044% in 2021. Identity theft became a crime in Canada in 1998 and is committed when someone steals your personal information, such as your name, social insurance number, date of birth, um, and then they you know, typically hijack your credit and use it for fraudulent purposes, such as opening up new credit accounts, taking out loans in your name, or accessing your bank or retirement accounts. An identity thief can even use your personal information to steal your tax refunds or commit crimes in your name, open you up to all sorts of massive liabilities. I think we can agree that that all sounds a wee bit scary and we can probably also agree that it'd be pretty good if we could avoid that if possible. So I'm not going to waste any more time, let's get stuck into how you can minimise your risk from identity theft. The first and quite often overlooked way you can reduce your risk this year is by checking your credit report. This one is not exactly revolutionary or groundbreaking, but there is a large portion of the population that simply just doesn't take the time to do this. It's generally recommended that you check your credit score at least once a year. Checking your credit report regularly allows you to see what creditors see when they're evaluating your applications for loans and credit cards making routine credit checks part of your regular financial maintenance plan can not only help you see where your credit stands, but also potentially spot red flags that could suggest identity theft or fraud and take measures to improve your credit score. Contrary to what many Canadians believe, checking your credit report will also not damage your credit score. Viewing your own credit report is what is called a soft inquiry. Only hard inquiries have the ability to affect your score. You can easily check your credit score through Equifax, TransUnion or Borrowwell. The second way that you can reduce your risk that we're going to talk about today is by regularly reviewing transactions and shredding important documents that you no longer need. Two more things you should already be doing anyhow. As well as checking your credit score at least once a year, you should be keeping an eye on your banking transactions. Thanks to online banking services, in most cases, this can be done in a minute or less by quickly scanning over your credit card bills or transactions to look for any untoward or unauthorized charges or questionable account activity. On top of that, just make sure that you shred all documents that you're discarding, including pre-approved credit applications received in your name, insurance forms, bank checks and statements, and other financial or otherwise sensitive information. An identity thief can easily pick through your garbage or recycling. But if your garbage has been around for centuries, why is this identity theft on the rise lately? 
Cyber security or the lack thereof can help explain the uplift of incidents. As much as the digital age has provided us with ample opportunities, it has opened up new avenues for identity thieves to ply their craft. Now, this is such a broad topic that if there's enough interest in doing so, we may dedicate another video on its own to cybersecurity as a whole. So, if there is interest, let us know in the comment section below or send us an email directly. These days, we seemingly have a million and one passwords for everything and anything. You really need to try and use as strong as passwords as possible online. An easy password is like Christmas coming early for cyber criminals. You may have heard this story, but at the actual CIA, and this was more than 15 years ago now, it has been reported that the default password used by the systems engineering team for all kind of things was basically password 1234. So what I'm saying here is don't go and beat yourself up if you're sitting there with a simple password. Uh, you know, even the most secretive organizations in the world have had to learn over the years. But now is the time to make some changes. Password 1234 is not going to fly anymore. Make passwords more complicated by combining letters and numbers, adding special characters, and as much as this is annoying, change them regularly. I get it. There's so many passwords these days, it's just not easy to remember them all, but you do have to. One thing that may help you a wee bit is that there's a number of secure password managers these days, um, which can make things a little easier to keep track of. Two-factor authentication is an additional layer of security that you can consider introducing to your defensive measures, but be wary of losing access to the phone number, device, or email that is used as the authenticator. A password and two-factor is intended to keep others out, not yourself. Another major cybersecurity risk is public Wi-Fi, which is a total playground for hackers. Don't be running around logging in to your online banking or giving out personal information in the middle of the mall. Only download applications from trusted sources at home or on a secure network. Sticking with the internet, and this can be very hard these days with seemingly everything from our breakfast in the morning to what the cat ate for lunch, getting posted in social media. This does mean though that you really do need to be careful with what you do share. And don't be sitting there all smug thinking this one is directed at the youngsters. This is common across all age groups. Tech savvy thieves can be very quickly gather what you share on social networks to use it for scams, phishing, and account theft. On top of that, a little less social media may make the world a bit of a better place, says the hypocrite actively posting videos on YouTube. Last but not least, for cybersecurity is one we've just mentioned, phishing. Don't take the bait. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll agree that that was an awful joke to be fair, so. On a more serious note, never give out your personal information over the phone, through the mail, or over the internet, unless you have initiated the contact. These thieves have gotten better over the years. The old uncle in Nigeria who has left you a million dollar story has got a little bit more complex, and they can be convincing. More elaborate schemes have come out the woodwork with some offering free money if you connect your bank account or others recording your voice to use at a later date with automated phone lines requesting voice confirmation. Keep your wits about you and if you have any doubts at all, just hang up the phone, delete or shred. Hopefully today has given you a few things to think about and a few habits to consider changing, if nothing else. If you do suspect that you're a victim of identity fraud, contact the police and notify all the institutions that you deal with as soon as possible. As always, if you have any questions below, please do let us know. 
And as I mentioned earlier in the video, if there's any interest in doing a deeper dive into these topics, let me know and we can break them down into a series. This channel is as much yours as it is mine, so you know I wanna, wanna help out where I can. If you thought the video was valuable today, please do give us a like button. Uh, you know, it helps with YouTube's algorithms to get this out to more people. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to the channel. Until next time, take care.